In this video, we're going to extend the concept of nominal and effective interest rates to include the ability to determine an interest rate for any period of time that we would like. So we're going to look at what is it meant by a period definition and how do we decide whether it's going to be a month or a year or six months or whatever. And then interest rate per period and subperiod calculations and then determining the interest rate um, that we want to use for an equivalence calculation. So we remember this equation I, in the, from the last video, which is converting annual, um, annual, um, annual nominal rates to annual effective. So this is annual, this is annual, and this is compounding per year. So this is all has to do with going from nominal annual to effective annual. But what happens if the interest rate is per month or per quarter? What if the, we want to know what that interest rate is? And how do we determine what is the correct interest rate to use? I think one of the best ways to look at this is to look at an example because it's kind of unclear what it is I'm talking about possibly. But what if I wanted to deposit $200 into a bank account each year? each pay period, which is every two weeks, and, but the, and the bank pays 4% compounded daily, how much will I have after five years? So we have this depositing continually for five years every two weeks, and we have a, an interest rate. So this is the information we have. We have A is $200 per every two weeks. It's for five years. The R value is 4%, um, and the M is 365. Now we know we're going to use um, R because of this word compounded here. So we know that's what we're going to be using. So And so now we need to say, well, what else do we need to do? Um, so the question is, well, what is a period? Are we going to be doing it every two weeks, every year, every, every day? Because we have five years, and we have interest rate per day, and we have cash flow deposits every two weeks. How are we going to define a period? And in engineering economy, the period definition is really defined by the cash flow frequency. So for us, the period or the subperiod is going to be every two weeks. That's what a period is going to be for us, for this problem. So that means we're going to convert this input data. It's still going to be every, it's $200 every two weeks. But now the number of periods is not five years, but it's 26 two-week periods per year times five weeks. So it's 130 periods. And the interest rate we need to know is what is the interest rate for two weeks. So all of those need to be defined consistently for a two-week period. So now the problem is how do we get the interest rate for a two-week period? And the way we do it is we know that for every day we can figure out the interest rate that it's 4% divided by 365, that's R over M. So we know we can figure it out for every day, which is 0.0109% uh, per day. And we know that it's going to be compounded for 14 times or 14 days in a two-week period. And so if we, combine, if we compound the 1 plus I, which is 0.0109, um, well, 0 0.000109 for 14 period, 14 days, we'll get a two-week interest rate, which is 0.153%. So remember that 0.153%. So that's one way that we can get this in interest rate per period. And now we have all the input data we need. So all we need to know is that the future value of $200 deposited 130 times at an interest rate of 0.153 per two-week period. And we don't have in the tables, we don't have an interest rate table that is 0.153. So we do the calculations in um, by hand. And we come up with 28,742. So that's the answer. Now, how are we going to, so that when we look at this, there's actually an equation that we can use in order to convert from any interest rate in a subperiod to a particular interest rate that we require. So in this case, we have um, I sub K, which is the effective interest rate per subperiod or per period as we've defined it. 
And R is a nominal interest rate. That's always an annual rate. And M is always the number of compounding periods per year. And K is the number of subperiods per year. So the thing that we're trying to find, which is the K value is defined by the cash flow frequency. Let's look at this particular, this example that we had that we just went through. So in this case, we wanted um, I of sub K is the effective interest rate per two-week period. We used R at 4%, M at 365, and K was 26 because it's defined as the number of subperiods per period, um, per year, number of subperiods per year. So if we plug that into the equation, we get the same value of 0.153, which is what we got when we compounded the daily 14 times. We got the same values. So in this video, what we did is we looked at what is, how is the various period definition. When it's not a year, we're looking at other kinds of period definitions. And how do we convert nominal values to subperiod interest rates? And then so what we have is we have this equation too. We have an additional equation that we added to our knowledge.